Here are the top stories for today, December 20, 2019. Malacanang expressed positive reactions as justice is served for the victims of the Maguindanao massacre. The Presidential Task Force on Media Security credits President Duterte's political will for bringing justice in the Maguindanao massacre case. The Regional Wage Board approves the increase in the wages of domestic workers in Metro Manila. And the Army conducts Christmas outreach activities for Indigenous Peoples Communities in Soligao del Sur. Good day, I'm Bench Bondok. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. We begin at the nation's top office, Malacanang. On Thursday, welcomed the court's ruling that favors the 57 victims of the massacre in Ampatuan Town in Maguindanao Province 10 years ago. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo was convinced that the court's verdict was based on the pieces of evidence presented by both the prosecution and the defense. Janice Cave has our top story. Judge Jocelyn Solis Reyes of the Quezon City Regional Trial Court Branch 221 found eight members of the Ampatuan clan and 20 others guilty for 57 counts of murder and meted them with the penalty of reclusion perpetua or up to 40 years imprisonment without parole. The palace welcomes as it respects the decision rendered by Judge Jocelyn Solis Reyes of Branch 221 of the Regional Trial Court of Quezon City on the decade-long case where 58 individuals, 32 of whom were media workers, were assassinated in Ambatu and Maguindanao last November 23, 2009. Panelo said President Duterte and his administration would ensure that there will be no duplication of Maguindanao massacre in the country. The Maguindanao massacre marks a dark chapter in recent Philippine history that represents merciless disregard for the sacredness of human life, as well as the violent suppression of press freedom. This savage affront to human rights should never have a duplication in this country's history. The chief executive assures us of his absolute obedience to the constitutional command to serve and to protect the Filipino people, even at the sacrifice of his life, liberty, and honor. Panelo clarified that the executive branch did not interfere to influence the court's decision. We reiterate that the participation of the executive branch, considering that the case was pending for adjudication before another independent branch of the government, the judiciary, is defined by virtue of the principle of separation of powers with regard to this suit. PCOO Secretary Martin Andanar earlier said that the President had exhausted all efforts to ensure the immediate promulgation of the court's decision on the Maguindanao massacre case. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. In related news, the families of the Maguindanao massacre victims hailed the court's verdict saying justice has finally been served. Maguindanao 2nd District Representative Esmael Toto Mangu Dadatu said the decision was fair despite acquitting former acting Maguindanao Governor and now Sharif Saidona Mustafa Mayor Sajid Ampatuan and several policemen. Mangu Dadatu said the ruling proven that the decade-long wait for justice became fruitful and that justice is alive in the country. He also thanked all the media who kept an eye on the case from the start until the promulgation. Arlene Ompag, relative of UNTV cameraman Mac Gilbert Ariola, who was among those mercilessly executed, said it is a mix of happiness and sadness. Noemi Parcon, wife of local newspaper publisher Joel Parcon, who was also among those killed, said she had already forgiven the policemen involved. Aside from the victims, relatives of implicated police officers who were acquitted welcomed the court's ruling. Caroline Cantong, wife of Police Corporal Jimmy Cantong, said her husband is finally cleared of a crime which he did not commit. Meanwhile, the Defense Press Corps said the court's ruling sends a strong message against perpetrators of attacks on media workers. Staying with the Maguindanao massacre verdict, various media organizations also hailed the conviction 
of some members of the Ampatuan clan and several others involved in the case. The National Union of Journalists of the Philippines immediately welcomed the decision saying it was long overdue. NUJP also lauded the families of the 57 victims for never giving up and standing their ground despite threats and alleged offers of bribes. Meanwhile, the Mindanao Independent Press Council said it hopes the Maguindanao massacre would provide a platform of cooperation between the journalists and the government to create a more secure environment for members of the press. The College Editors Guild of the Philippines also welcomed the court's decision convicting the culprits behind the 2009 Maguindanao Massacre case. The decade-long Maguindanao Massacre is dubbed as the trial of the century as it cast light on the culture of impunity in the country. As President Rodrigo Duterte welcomed the court's ruling, others also lauded the court's decision. Let's find out more from Joyce Kudis. The Department of Justice on Thursday expressed satisfaction with the decision of the Quezon City Regional Trial Court convicting most of the principal accused in the Maguindanao Massacre case. Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara said it is something that the prosecution has less anticipated. Meanwhile, Interior Secretary Eduardo Años said the decision is a triumph of the country's justice system and congratulates the court and the prosecutors for a job well done. PNP officer in charge, Lieutenant General Archie Francisco Gamboa, also hailed the decision saying the PNP will double all efforts to account for Ampatuan massacre convicts who are still at large. Senator Panflo Laxon on Thursday also commended Judge Jocelyn Solis Reyes for her courage and integrity. He also defended Solis Reyes for the long time it took to conclude the trial, saying the judge restored the public's trust in the country's justice system. A Mindanao bishop also lauded the conviction of 28 accused, including Datu Andalam Patuan Jr. and his brother Zaliam Patuan, calling it as God's answer to prayers for justice. Ozami's Archbishop Martin Humawad said, Heavens have heard the cry of the poor and no one can escape the justice of God. Humawad meanwhile hopes that those who were acquitted are really innocent. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Joyce Kudis. Still to come. The Presidential Task Force on Media Security credits President Duterte's political will for bringing justice in the Maguindanao massacre case. And the Regional Wage Board approves the increase in the wages of domestic workers in Metro Manila. These stories are next when the PNA Newsroom continues. December 2, Lunes, Malacanang. Pinangunahan ni Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte ang Christmas tree lighting ceremony sa Kalayaan Grounds. Sinundan ito ng 44th Cabinet Meeting na ginanap sa Aguinaldo State Dining Room. December 3, Martes, Malacanang. Pinanumpa ni Pangulong Duterte ang mga bagong talagang government officials at mga newly elected officers ng League of Municipalities of the Philippines. Naging makasaysayan naman ang pagpirma ng Pangulo sa Marasakit Center Act. Pinagpaliban din niya ang May 2020 Barangay at Sangguniang Kabataan Elections. December 4, Miyerkules, Malacanang. Tinanggap ng Pangulo ang credentials ng mga bagong talagang ambassadors mula sa China, Denmark, Hellenic Republic, Myanmar, Sri Lanka at South Africa. December 5, Webes, Legazpi City. Nagpunta si Pangulong Duterte sa Bicol upang alamin ang lawak ng pinsalang dulot ng Bagyong Tisoy. The government agencies uh, knew what to do before the typhoon hit landfall, what it did during the entire uh, crisis and after. So, uh, I am more than satisfied by the response. The question is, uh, as always, if we have this kind of uh, situation after you make the assessment, the evaluation is there, it's always money. But I think when we know you reporting you then we will take over and I will uh, advise you accordingly on the land that I think of. Misamis Oriental. 
Nagbigay pugay si Pangulong Duterte kay Police Master Sergeant Jason Magno ang bayaning polis na nagbuwis ng buhay upang protektahan ng mga estudyante sa pagsabog ng isang granada sa loob ng kanilang paaralan. Ako po si Secretary Martin Andana at ito ang Duterte on Duty. Abangan sa susunod na linggo ang mga gagawin ng Pangulo. The Presidential Task Force on Media Security says President Rodrigo Duterte's political will proved instrumental in bringing justice in the Maguindanao massacre case. Under Secretary Joel C. Eggo said the President acted to speed up the judicial process and obtain justice for the victims of the Maguindanao massacre. He said since the President started his term, he had ensured that he would help the families of the victims. Duterte earlier directed then-Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre and former presidential spokesperson Harry Roque to work double-time on the Anpatuan case. EGCO said it was through the president's political will that justice that was elusive for 10 years was finally served. Moving over to other stories, an early Christmas gift for our Kasambahays, the Regional Tripartite Wages and Productivity Board has formally approved the increase of 1,500 pesos in the salary of domestic workers in Metro Manila. The new monthly minimum wage rate will be at 5,000 pesos once the order takes effect. Covered by the wage adjustment are house helpers, yayas or nannies, cooks, gardeners and laundry persons. The NCR Wage Board said the order was issued after it reviewed the socio-economic condition in Metro Manila, Moto Proprio, or on its own. It is also the result of public consultations and hearings involving employers and domestic workers, among others. The wage order will take effect 15 days after it is published in a newspaper of general circulation. Under the Kasambahay Law, regional wage boards are mandated to review the minimum wage rates for domestic workers regularly. Prior to the issuance of the new wage order, the monthly floor wage for domestic workers is at 3,500 pesos. On to some business headlines. Improvement of the Philippines ranking in World Bank's 2020 Ease of Doing Business report from 124th place to 95th helped pave the way for the lender to increase its allocation for the country. Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez III on Thursday explained that this was the result of the passage of laws such as the Ease of Doing Business, the Rice Tarification Law, the Philippine Identification System Act, and the National Payment Systems Act. He also cited several fiscal reforms like the Comprehensive Tax Reform Program and the initiatives targeted to improve financial resilience against natural disasters. He thanked the World Bank for its confidence in the country's determination to push forward reforms that will create a strong and inclusive economy. World Bank Country Director Ashim Falk, meanwhile, said the country continues to post substantial gains in its bid to address poverty through sustained rapid growth since 2010. He said the partnership with the Philippine government is focused on asset management and taps the private sector to have more holistic gains. Media groups and local residents in parts of Mindanao welcomed the guilty verdict meted in the Maguindanao massacre. Our William Theo has the story. Residents in Cotabato City and in neighboring Maguindanao province expressed positive reactions on Thursday verdict finding guilt in most of the principal suspects of the 2009 Maguindanao massacre incident. Locals have said they were satisfied that justice has been served. Carlos Bautista, president of the Kapisana ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas, Cotabato City Chapter, said that media workers in the city have supported the decade-old search for justice by families of the massacre victims. Members of the media in Caraga region also cheered the court's guilty verdict in the Maguindanao massacre. Local newspaper editor Franklin Kagilid said he was relieved with the court's decision finding the principal suspects guilty of the crime. 
Mike Crismundo, a correspondent of Manila Bulletin, said, while justice has been rendered to the victims, the reality of losing a friend and colleague cannot be erased. Alejandro Bong Reblando, one of the victims in the massacre, was newly appointed then as regular correspondent in Region 12. Meanwhile, media organizations in Cagayan de Oro applauded the guilty verdict rendered in the infamous Ampatuan massacre on Thursday. In a statement, the Cagayan de Oro Press Club expressed jubilation over the decision handed down by Quezon City Regional Trial Court Judge Jocelyn Solis Reyes that ended the decade-long trial. However, COPC called on the Philippine National Police to arrest the remaining 80 suspects who still remain at large. For the PNA Newsroom, I am William Thiel. More stories from the newsroom. Malacanang shrugs off the inclusion of a National Geographic documentary on the government's war on drugs in the 92nd Oscar Awards. And the Army conducts Christmas outreach activities for indigenous peoples' communities in Sodigao del Sur. We're back after a quick break. Stay with the PNA Newsroom. How many millions are affected by drugs? Seaports, airports, through our coastlines. Of the crime of murder, punishable by reclusion perpetua or 30 years maximum imprisonment. Sinasaksak pa ng bundin dito sa bato, kaya ang daming tama mo dito. Minsan ang daan tungo sa kaimikan ay sa pamagitan ng pagsisimula ng gela. Ay sasakay yung papa. Bakit? In other news, Malacanang on Thursday deemed as irrelevant the National Geographic's documentary about President Rodrigo Duterte's anti-narcotics campaign that has been shortlisted for the 92nd Oscars Documentary Short Subject category. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said he believed that choosing the winning film would be based on certain criteria and not the truth. One of the president's campaign promises in the 2016 elections was to put an end to the drug proliferation in the country. Nat Geo's documentary directed by Alexander Mora and produced by Joanna Natasegara focuses on a small group of determined photojournalists on a mission to expose the true cost of the violent campaign of Duterte's drug war. The Nightcrawlers premiered in October on the National Geographic channel and can still be streamed on Nat Geo TV application. Nominations for the 92nd Oscar Awards will be announced on January 13, 2020, while the ceremony will take place at Dolby Theatre in Hollywood on February 20, 2020. 
From being a subject of regular visits from law enforcers to destroy marijuana plants, Kapangan Town in Benguet now get tourists to visit the place. The municipal government of Kapangan has transformed the sleepy town into a tourist attraction, especially with the Badi Falls gaining popularity. Badi Falls is located in Barangay Sagubo, one of the three villages identified in the past where high-grade marijuana plants were clandestinely grown. It is regularly visited by tourists from different parts of the country, especially during the summer. The village has also Camp Utopia, a former military camp and infirmary during the World War II, located some 43 kilometers from the town proper. Other tourist attractions in the town include the Amburayan River, a trek at Mount Dakiwagan or popularly known as Santa Claus Mountain, the Tampan Rice Terraces, Longog Cave, and the Burial Caves in Barangay Pungayan. Kapangan is about one and a half hour from Benguet capital town, La Trinidad, via the Halsema Road in Tublay Town. The Surf Riders Club of Eastern Samar has bared plans to form the Eastern Visayas Surfing Circuit to hone the skills of local surfers. Club President Rupert Ambil said this was the suggestion of the Department of Tourism and endorsed to the Philippine Surfing Championship team. Ambil said this is part of plans to make Region 8 as the center of surfing in the Visayas. Famous surfing spots in the region include Kalikoan Island in Giwan Eastern Samar, Borongan City Eastern Samar, and Dulag Leyte. Aside from these three areas, there are other good spots along the Pacific coast, but some of these spots are still not promoted to surfing enthusiasts. Ambil said his group is promoting the surfing spot in Borongan, because it is located within the city's commercial center and near facilities like hospitals for emergency response. He said they should also open up some areas for beginners and the public. And before we go, in the spirit of Christmas, the Philippine Army conducted a series of gift-giving activities in several indigenous people's communities in Sodigao del Sur this week. The outreach of the Army's 3rd Special Forces Battalion benefited the Manobo communities in Sitio Supon, Barangay Magsaysay, and Sitio Simowau, Barangay Diatagon in the town of Lianga, and in Karasan in the municipality of Tago. These villages are affected by communist conflicts and considered as traditional routes of the New People's Army in the area. Government troopers immerse themselves with the IP communities through gift-giving, sharing of food, distribution of goods, and Noche Buena packages to IP households, and the giving of school supplies and toys to children. Meanwhile, a Christmas-related activity was also conducted on Thursday in Sitio Hugmakan, Barangay San Juan, Bayugan City, Agusan del Sur. Soldiers distributed household goods, toys, and school supplies in Punsalan, Sitio Hugmakan, a conflict-affected area in Bayugan City. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. Malacanang expressed positive reactions as justice is served for the victims of the Maguindanao massacre. The Presidential Task Force on Media Security credits President Duterte's political will for bringing justice in the Maguindanao massacre case. The Regional Wage Board approves the increase in the wages of domestic workers in Metro Manila. And the Army conducts Christmas outreach activities for indigenous people's communities in Soligao del Sur. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, check our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. Are you ready for the festive season? It's five days before Christmas. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm Bench Bondok. Have a great weekend.